The game of bingo involves drawing labeled balls from a bin at random without replacement. There are 75 balls, 15 for each of the letters B, I, N, G, and O, which I have shown here below. Again, we have five letters. Each letter has 15 balls. We're told to round all answers to three decimal places. Number one, what is the probability of drawing two B balls in the first two selections? We can indicate this as the probability of a B on the first ball and a B on the second ball. Because the outcome of selecting a B ball on the second selection is affected by selecting a B ball on the first selection, the two events are dependent and therefore the probability of a B on the first ball and a B on the second ball is equal to the probability of a B on the first ball times the probability of a B on the second ball given the first ball is a B. So now let's find these two probabilities and then find the product. We begin by determining the probability the first ball is a B. Well again there are 15 B balls out of a total of 75 balls. The probability the first ball is a B is 15 70 fifths. Now that we assume the first ball is a B and we do not have replacement, there are now only 14 B balls out of a total of 74 balls, not 75 balls. And therefore, the probability that the second ball is a B, given the first ball is a B, is 14 70 fourths. So we have times 14 70 fourths. Notice how the number of B balls dropped by one, and so did the total number of balls. And now we need to find the probability rounded to three decimal places. So going to the calculator, we have 15 70 fifths times 14 70 fourths. Because we have an eight in the fourth decimal place, we round up to 0 0.038. which if we were asked as a percent is 3.8 percent. Number two, what is the probability of drawing a B on the second selection given that you already have drawn a G on the first selection? This is called conditional probability because we are given you have already drawn a G on the first selection. We can indicate this using the notation shown here, the probability of selecting a B ball given the first ball is a G. So if we already know the first ball is a G, there are now only 14 G balls, and there are also only 74 balls, not 75 balls. And therefore the probability of selecting a B ball, given the first ball is a G, is 15 70 fourths, because there are 15 B balls out of a total of 74 balls. And now we go back to the calculator. 15 divided by 74, because we have a seven in the fourth decimal place, we round up to 0 0.203, which would be 20.3%. Number three, what is the probability of drawing either a I or an O on the first selection? We can indicate this as the probability of I or O on the first selection. Since a ball cannot be an I or an O at the same time, these events are mutually exclusive and therefore the probability of I or O on the first selection is equal to the probability of an I on the first selection plus the probability of an O on the first selection. Well there are 15 I's out of 75 balls. The probability of an I on the first selection is 15 70 fifths plus the probability of an O on the first selection would also be 15 70 fifths because there are 15 O's out of 75 balls. And now adding, we have a common denominator of 75. We add the numerators, which gives us 30 70 fifths. Going to the calculator, 30 divided by 75 is equal to 0 0.4. So here there's obviously no need to round. Number four, what is the probability of not drawing a G on the first selection, which we can indicate using this notation here? Since there are 75 balls, 15 of which are G, 75 minus 15 is 60. There are 60 balls that are not G, which would be the B, I, N, and O balls. And therefore the probability of not G would be 60 70 fifths. Again, there are 60 balls that are not G out of a total of 75 balls. 
going back to the calculator one last time. Sixty divided by seventy-five is zero point eight. I hope you found this helpful.